There you go. That's kind of an eggish sort of circle, right? Now, we don't have a whole circle. We have a part cut out. Okay? So this is question eight. This is question eight. Um, you can hold on to... Uh, hmm. Actually, let me let me draw the measurements on and then I'll give you my piece of paper and you can follow that. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, like I said, they've got a part cut out of it, so let me just cut that out now. That's like that. Yeah, so use the saw. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring the saw with me. I gave it back to Taz. Oh. There you go. Okay. Now, they give you two measurements. The first one is this, um, this angle in here. Okay, that's 40 degrees. Actually, that's not close to 40 degrees, but anyway, it'll do. And then what's the other measurement they give you? It has a name. What's it called? The distance is 124 meters, but what does that, like, what's that related to this circle? Like, it has, it has a name, start to date. It's the diameter, that's right. So, um, let me have this. Okay, now it's important to get that it's the diameter, because when we're working out the area of this in a second, we don't want the diameter, we want something else, okay? So... A couple of things. The first thing is, this is 40 degrees, but that's the part we don't want. We want, we want this part. That's the part we actually want, right? So how do I work out the size of this angle? Yeah. Um, so I'm oh. the radius by half the diameter. Okay, I will find out the radius. Actually, why don't we find out the radius now? Half the diameter is, I think we said 62 meters, wasn't it? So I'm gonna put that there, because you know that's, that's one of the, that's the radius, okay? Luke. Um, the angle? Yeah. The angle? Yeah. The 360 degrees minus 40 degrees. Okay, perfect. Now, 360 degrees minus 40 degrees. Why, where does this 360 come from? It's correct, but what, see, why a 360? Why not 370 or 380? Because, uh, um, revolution. Yeah, good. Th this is a full revolution, right? That's all the way around. Okay, so you've got that and you're taking it away. So, of course, that gives you an answer of 320. Okay, so there you go. That's the angle. Okay. Superior so already helped us work out what the radius is. Okay. So now when we want to work out the area. Okay. It's not a whole circle. Not a whole circle. How much of the circle is it? What's well, most of it, isn't it? But to be more specific, it's this much of the circle. You see what's going on here, right? If, for instance, uh, we had half the circle, we had a semicircle, okay? Let me just quickly draw one of those for you. I'm thinking about a semicircle because you guys know semicircles a little better, okay? Now, a semicircle is half the circle, right? So let's just take the same dimensions here. Let's say the radius was 62, okay? Now, if this is half a circle, what's the angle? It's 180 degrees. You can also see, you know, it's a straight line. 180 degrees is the angle sum of a straight line. Okay. So if I want to work out the area of this thing, it's a half times whatever the area of a circle is. Pi r squared. Okay. But this half here is really 180 over 360. You see, it's this angle, right? That tells you how much of the circle you've got. If I have 180, that's half the circle. If I had only 90, how much of the circle would that be? A quarter. A quarter. In fact, we call that a quadrant, right? Now, this number is really awkward, 320. It's not a special number, but it tells us how much of the circle we want, okay? So this part here, very few people got. So that's why it's really important you write this one down. Okay. Now, that's how much of the circle you want. What's a whole circle? Pi r squared. And we already worked out what the radius was, right? So 320 on 360. And from here, pretty much your calculator can take over. Okay, if you put it in correctly. Uh, obviously you can simplify this fraction a little bit if you wanted to, I think it's, um, what is it? Seven eighths, eight ninths, it's eight ninths, okay. But all the same, the calculator will give you this. And that's to two decimal places. Okay? So there's a lot to that though. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of work in that question, which is why it was worth so many marks. So let me just 
Um, what's the hint? Rehearse where they are. One mark for getting that angle. That's tricky. One mark for getting this radius and realizing that you need the radius and you can't just work with only 24. I think the other mark was here for noting well, how you're going to use that angle, that 320. Right? You're going to use it by doing this kind of division. Okay? And this is your last mark for evaluating. Okay? Any questions on that? Anyone want to clarify any bits? How many marks do you get if you, if you did it exactly like that, except you didn't do, you did a whole circle instead of writing? So as in, you, you missed this part? Yeah. You missed this part? Yeah, 360. Hmm, okay. It sounds like you'd get two out of four. The reason why, I'll tell you why. Um, because if that means the angle wasn't calculated, then that's one mark there. And if it means that you didn't use the angle, um, then that's another, like that's a mark as well. Okay. Um, what we call that is a simplified carried forward error. So there's different kinds of errors that you commit. I'll give you an example. Suppose I calculate this wrong. Suppose I said it was 300 degrees. Okay. So you will not get that mark because you got the angle wrong, right? But getting that angle wrong doesn't make this any easier. Like you still have to do all the same amount of work, you just get a slightly different number at the end. So if you did everything exactly the same, you got 300 degrees, got some other number out here, 9,000 and something, okay, um, you'd get three marks. You lose one mark for making one error, okay? On the other hand, what you just described, not having the angle at all, right, that actually substantially makes the question easier. Like that's easier to work out than when you've got that angle thing out the front, okay? So that's why you're not eligible for three marks, you're only eligible for two. No, Does that make sense? 360. Oh, you mean like, you mean like had this 360 on 360? And like completely ignored the 40, just as, as if it was... Oh yeah, well that's what I mean. If you're ignoring it, that makes the question much easier. It simplifies it. So there's less complexity in the question. So it'd be just like, in fact it's exactly like, you know in, um, in any Olympic sport where there is, um, you know, like say figure skating, diving, uh, um, synchronized swimming, all those kinds of things, where the difficulty of your routine affects the maximum score you can get, right? Obviously, if, if my routine is just like dive into the pool and not do any spinning or, or, or you know, somersaulting or whatever, right? but I nail it perfectly, surely I can't get the same mark as someone who, you know, does all these twists and turns and all this complicated stuff. Okay. Yeah, no, actually, I probably couldn't because, uh, anyway. No, but there you go. Okay, so by simplifying the question, you lose out on, on the marks that you would have gotten, that everyone else, if they had done the full question, would have received. Okay, good question.